welcome to a special bonus episode of the There It Is podcast. Thanks so much for being here. And if this is your first time listening, thanks for listening. But you have so much to catch up on, (laughs) including this week's episode. Episodes come out on Tuesday. So a couple of days ago, we had John Ross on the podcast. Really great talk in this bonus episode is a portion that was cut from that interview and it was really good really thoughtful conversation on comedy and people trying to navigate not offending people and also trying to in a respectful and tactful way address when you have offended people and it's, a, I thought, a really great chat. I wanted to uh, take that out and make it a bonus episode. This begins with us talking about Adele hosting SNL, and there's a controversial sketch to some people, and we go from there. Here's my bonus chat with John Ross. Yeah, like Adele hosting, you know, I kind of went in a little cautious. Like, I love Adele. Yeah. I think she's like a big sweetheart, but like I went into that episode a little cautious. Yeah. But then she like delivered she did, yeah. like over and over again. I was like, even the even the coming to Africa sketch. Yeah, <laughs> at the very that, that one was controversial, but what was your take on that? I I get it because like I I did clock the dudes in the background right right consistently I was like I was like oh okay and then I was like eh but part of the joke is that they are these like ter- like the joke is on them but mm-hmm. it, it was not even it was just so much fun to watch Adele just trying oh, trying yeah, yeah. her heart her hardest to keep it together and Kate McKinnon just like really not taking like holding any punches like <laughs> oh, going as hard as she can to make a break McKinnon. yeah um yeah i felt the same way about that sketch where because there are all these people online who were saying yeah. they were fetishizing yeah. black men and the point really was that people have fetish like have fetishized black men and they're making yeah. fun of those people for doing that yeah, like it's not like we're rooting for these characters to get what they want. It's kind of like right. this is the crazy type stuff that these people would say. Right, right. That's a hard kind of comedy to, comedy to do right now without getting without ruffling feathers. And I understand the sensitivity behind getting upset about that stuff, but there does seem to be a fundamental misunderstanding on what <laughs> satire is and what comedy does. I mean, a lot of people, it's like, use satire and sass to be like, not sass, but use, they try to use satire and hide behind Mm -hmm. what end up being mean jokes. Mm -hmm. And there is like, it is hard to do satire right now. I feel like everyone thinks that um, this is like the golden age, or not everyone, but outsiders think that this is the golden age of comedy. And it's like, no, this really sucks. Like, <laughs> We're being very careful not to upset people, and it's kind of impossible not to upset somebody. <laughs> it, yeah, like, it, it's you're, you're going to upset somebody when you, you know. You're going to upset well-meaning people, and that's the thing. Like, yes. The, the people that I saw on Twitter, they weren't like idiots. They were smart people who have their heart in the right place. They just don't seem to know that they weren't, you know, or whatever they're they're criticizing because there have been a few things in SNL recently that they've been criticizing. They don't seem to to pinpoint the real point. But it's hard on Twitter to do that when you have so many people, like you were alluding to, who will hide behind it because there are people who want to um, act like the fetish, like like doing that to black men, making black men a fetish is okay. And uh, they will argue it's just comedy when what they really mean is, yeah, you know, it's just, like something it's just racist. Bla- <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I understand on Twitter how that di- how that dialogue is really hard to have. Yeah. But outside of Twitter, where we're not like playing these dumb games that people play on Twitter, the show was trying to make a joke. A, out of people who were doing a bad thing and not trying to say it's okay to do this bad thing. 
and I can even say it's. It, it, I would even argue it's fair if you if you're gonna fault the show, the the sketch for that, then you can say like, well, it just wasn't clear enough. Right. right versus right. like, like there's a. It feels like there's a big knee jerk reaction on both i guess on both sides to say like there's a knee-jerk reaction that's basically like that thing is racist and therefore it is bad and then there's a knee-jerk reaction the on the other side to be like if if there's a complaint made i feel like people tend to get a little too defensive and it's like well it's not racist for this this and this reason it's like okay this thing can be like it doesn't need to be net good or net bad it can be you know oh that was funny but here was an issue with it yeah, and like, I think what happens a bit too often in, in online discussions is people act like it's having more of an impact than it is, and um, yeah, not that there's zero impact of these things, because there is an impact, but people do kind of overstate both sides of that argument, you know, both sides of the coin. They'll either overstate the impact it's having... Or they understate its ability to have an impact. When in truth, yeah. it can just be, I didn't like the sketch, it, it hit me this way. And when people say, like, well, they really didn't mean it that way, then we all can just move on. <laughs> like, we don't need to make a federal case out of it. <laughs> because people can just say, like, well, that's how it hit me. And, like, you know what? That's how you felt in that moment, and that's not an invalid thing. But... You know, if we were to sort of, if we, if we were, had the opportunity to ask the people who made it, they would say like, eh, no, not at all. Of course I don't mean that. <laughs> it's obviously a very liberal show. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I feel like there's people that'll go both ways on that, on like how liberal it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but I, I do, I do, they do, I mean, there seems to be not uh, a consistent pattern of ill intent Mm -hmm. yeah 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 for sure yeah and i think i think what can also happen sometimes and i am seeing this a lot from comics is a lack of clarity when there is a problem right like i basically like john mulaney took some heat for saying nothing's going to change no matter who wins this election on snl the other day Uh, did he yeah, and not, not did he say it, did he take some heat? I saw that. I liked I I really liked his episode, but I, I didn't realize he There were a few it wasn't as much and I think some people were trying to build it up in more of a thing because of the Bill Burr episode. But Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um there were some people who said this was an irresponsible thing to say right before the most important election. And uh he didn't say anything about it whatsoever. He had no response to it. He did post something about like support these these groups he said i give money to these groups that help uh uh uh, people of color and marginalized people so i ask that you do too and they shared links for it no one's gonna take that into account they're just gonna say they're just gonna like put up question marks on whether or not he's bad (laughs) for the progressive cause or not. And he's not going to say anything one way or the other directly to that. And same with Bill Burr. He doesn't, even though Bill Burr was like clearly saying black people are really getting the shaft (laughs) by white people and white feminism, including, uh, you know, like white liberal women are even kind of giving a lot of black people and black women the shaft. And there's, that is totally overlooked that clear point he was making is totally overlooked to criticize him, and he never clears the air. And I don't blame a comic for not clearing the air, but when we're having a dialogue around this stuff, it's kind of interesting when they don't, because then that leaves me in the position of just kind of taking their word, their kind of lack of a word, their word between the lines. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? I, I mean take it, that into account, and it's like, uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe they are a bastard. It does get to a point where it's like, it's kind of like I understand they can't respond to everything, but if you're going to be called out on it and like not take time to address it, then that does make it. I can understand that making it hard for people to be like, oh yeah, I can get still get behind this point of view. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like that can lead down like so, more or less uh, milkshake duck paths. Yeah. I think it's, 
but there's also this part of me that's like, I don't want comedians to always have to address the controversy surrounding their material because then it makes them, that puts them on a pedestal like leaders or politicians, yeah. which they're not. I, they, they, that's not to say I, they don't have an impact, but I yeah. mean, they're not, because of the job, they're not leaders. I mean, they're not inherently leaders. They're, no, no, no. They're definitely not. I would say they're inherently leaders, but it is like that thing of like, it, it, it feels like the root for me always goes back to like, oh, we're just like, as a country, like just very undereducated. Uh-huh. And there's like a lot of blurred lines on how things work. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially now when like, or not now, but especially like, with the way the way just the way like commercial and capitalism has kind of like led us there's like a lot of like well money kind of gets you everything in a not literally but like in a sense the more money you have the less problems you generally will have Mm -hmm. so like connecting that to like oh this person is rich and famous and they got there and they're like they started from especially when it's like a comedian that like kind of like oh it's like this comedian i know they started from nothing came to here Mm -hmm. it's like oh okay this person kind of like picked themselves up so to me it turned not for me but like it's just like i guess being aware of privilege Mm -hmm. uh and the message of that privilege as Mm -hmm. as a you know if you're gonna say these things like it's kind of like I guess like, trying to get back to the original point. If you're gonna put the put the work out there, mm-hmm. you also like if you're putting the work out there and you're getting paid, especially, right? You are subject. You are going to be subject to criticism. Now, right. if you get the same criticism over and over, uh, like, but your material is changing, then you need to might you might need to look inside and reflect. And like, oh, like I've always gotten this like that. I've always got like I was racist when I did this thing or I was homophobic or transphobic. Mm-hmm. So like I either have to change and find a new way to be funny about that material or let it go, which mm-hmm. can suck, or I have to like and I have to like you should at least own that, I guess, especially yeah. if you're when you're when you're in the position of making money off the art, mm-hmm. that is that's the people that, that I think are allowed to be criticized. Yeah. Uh f- within reason, not within like threatening their life or something. Like oh, yeah, and I guess an actual criticism, not like, like I fucking like, hate yeah, yeah, this yeah. thing. <laughs> like <laughs> a criticism of like, hey, I didn't like this and because Right, I have a reason. You didn't <laughs> You didn't consider this, you know, yeah. angle or whatever. Yeah, I agree with all that. And I also think, like, there's also, regardless of how many followers you have or how many people you can put your, you can be put in front of, you have a responsibility to be reasonable or, or responsible. You know, like you have to be responsible, whether you have a check mark and a bunch of followers on social media or you're on some show that has a couple few million views live and then is going to have a bunch million more online the next day. Uh, or if you have 30 followers, because even your tweet can go viral, you know, like if you have 30 followers. Yeah. So I think no matter what, if you're putting stuff out there, you have you have to be responsible with what you're saying and the validity of it. Now, you're going to say something that not everyone's going to agree with, no matter what you say, and that's different. But if you're saying something that is factually inaccurate, or if you have such a big blind spot that you don't acknowledge the truth that a bunch of people other than you live in, then that's a problem. And I think that sort of stuff is worth saying like, okay, I I didn't know that. Or if you say something that is like that guy who got fired before he even started the job, uh, that writer who was going to be there. Or he was oh, gonna be a, he was going to be a performer, yeah. A performer, yeah. Um, like that guy said things that were bad enough that that, that takes – you know, a little bit more of a, a a harsher thrashing than just saying like, "Hey, I didn't like this bit," because you know, like that person definitely should come out and say, uh, "I got to do work on myself." You know, but- I mean, 
I mean, the thing was, he didn't. It, it was like he was called out, and he was he did respond. It right, was just his response. His response was, "Oh, it was just a joke." Like, right. Yeah. You know? His response was real shitty, and it was like, "Okay, this is, then you don't like." It's like, right. "Oh, you're not willing to even like, even if it was just a joke, mm-hmm. you have to acknowledge and take ownership of like this right. was an offensive joke." Right. Like, if I'm going to juxtapose his situation with Bill Burr's situation, I think his situation is a situation where a comic should respond and be responsible with how they respond and be a human and a person in this world and have some humanity. Whereas with Bill Burr, I think it's one thing where it's like, well, I think my point was pretty clear. And if some people don't get it, they don't get it. But I I know that I didn't mean any harm, and I know that what I said was right about what what, what the bad thing that was happening to these people was was truthful. Um, you know, he used the B word, and so people said he was it was misogynistic. He can respond to that if he wants, but that's not necessarily on the same level as what that guy said about like Andrew Chang. You know, like that stuff straight up hate speech so you know i draw that kind of line <laughs> i don't want people who are in like john mulaney's situation to feel like they want well, you gotta you gotta sit you gotta answer for this there, there's got to be a, a a comedy version of meet the press and you've got to answer for this i don't think john mulaney or bill burr fall in that category but i do think like michael richards fell in that category when he had that outburst and when and that that racial tirade and yeah. same with this guy who who uh, got fired before the season started a couple years ago. Like those are situations where, like, yeah, it does take that serious of a response from from the people paying attention. That's valid. But I think people want to litigate it on that level in every single situation where they're offended, even if they're offended because they missed something. They're not willing to hear that they missed something. And that's not to say they shouldn't have been felt the way they felt in that moment. Yeah. But they still missed something, and they still should acknowledge that just as much as the comic should acknowledge, like, uh, maybe I should have worded that differently so people didn't miss the thing I was trying to say. And the, it's mostly on them to do that. <laughs> but if you miss something, uh, let's, not, let's not take it to meet the press level litigation here. Yeah. These aren't politicians. They're comics. <laughs> yeah. But I kind of I hate it when people say like it's just a joke because it doesn't make it okay it, to say something. It doesn't make it okay. Offensive. People people like to say. I mean, people like, like kids get really really mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I peruse TikTok quite a lot uh, and lots of funny stuff on there. But like, if you ever go to the comments, oh. like kids can sometimes be not not. I guess not. Yeah, they can be pretty mean on TikTok, too. I was going to say not too mean on TikTok. It's less often that you see it. TikTok has, like, a really fun, positive vibe. But, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it just... The the power to sit behind a keyboard anonymously and (laughs) trash someone is gives a lot of people a lot of creativity and boldness. Yep, yep, yep. It's uh, a shame, and I also hate it when people say online, well, it's the internet. It's like, no, it's Ugh. behavior. This is how you are behaving, and you don't have to behave that way. And you shouldn't behave that way because it's wrong to behave that way. There's no excuse just because it's the Internet. Yeah, the, it's the Internet doesn't, like, make it – it doesn't make it okay. Like, that doesn't, like, nullify that you did a shitty thing. Yeah, uh, right. Don't – yeah, that's a dumb excuse. I hate it. I hate it all the time. You know, I just think if everyone was a little more responsible and a little bit more caring, it would be better. You know, like, comics shouldn't feel like they have to be careful, but they should feel like they have to be caring. And I think if they're being caring when they're writing their material, then they're going to, the careful is going to take care of itself. Yeah. I I don't know. Part of it is, is sort of like especially with stand-up comedy like Mm -hmm. seeing it in live in a room is a much different experience than like watching this special Mm -hmm. on tape at home or reading it online the next or reading it online or whatever yeah and 
and it kind of like I feel like the way we <laughs> consume media so quickly and like as a large community sort of lends itself or sort of like puts comedy sometimes at a disadvantage because there are there is some universal co- like funny stuff mm-hmm. but there is some like there's some levels of comedy that are somewhat culturally specific mm-hmm. or even community specific mm-hmm. whereas it's like oh that joke sounds mean to me an outsider of this community mm-hmm. but like i don't have the context of like the root of the joke so like I don't even understand that it's a, a real a well written piece, mm-hmm. but I just don't under like I'm missing the key piece of implied information mm-hmm. uh, based on the audience or the view the viewing audience. Like I feel like there's a lot of um, older uh, like like older black shows that like people are like oh this doesn't hold up and it's like some of it is <laughs> problematic but. Some of it is Some of it is you're an 18 year old white kid. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it's like oh, it's it feels weird to have that whole not that whole but like a whole like generation of television put into this like sort of unwatchable bubble. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas it's it's like I don't know. We can at least appreciate it for the lessons learned from it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Comedy has this uh, shelf life because it's all born of the atmosphere at the time that it was made. That's and, true. Uh, and and of course, like up to what happened to that in that point too. But if, they're trying to be current, and they're they're the best comedy is being current and t- having a good pull, a good good hold on the pulse of how people are feeling in the zeitgeist at that time. But then everything changes. And because culture changes, it's constantly growing and changing. And it's, that's how you can watch a movie like French Connection and be kind of bored. It's because you've seen all of those things a million times in every action movie that came out after it because they ripped it off. But at the time, everybody loved it. <laughs> you know? It was great. It was innovative. <laughs> right. So it's the same with comedy where it's like, you know, the... The presence that Richard Pryor brought to the stage in the 70s was something special for black people to see at that time because they didn't have a bunch of examples of that (laughs) in in that kind of way, you know? So at that time, I don't fault anyone for being okay with it. But now, a lot of those jokes are like, oh, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. (laughs) It, I mean, it just, it, I, I think that was like a very nice way, not, not nice, but like a very great way to put it, put it, uh, that comedy is born sort of of the, of its time. And it kind of makes me wish that like, not wish, but like maybe some stuff should get a shelf life. It's like, after this point, we like, (laughs) we like kind of pull it down or like reevaluate or reclassify it in some way yeah um Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but again i feel like part of that comes back to like a little bit of the education thing where it's like we put i or or i guess more importantly how much important importance we put on media uh as a society Mm -hmm. is like a means of like like the fact that like a lot of people i'm sorry someone is yelling right outside my window uh the fact i know the fact that like a lot of people point to like media as their first examples for like oh yeah like i've i've seen black people on tv a bunch and it's like i've never seen one in real life it's kind of like oh like not that that's as common anymore but the fact that that was at one point a standing is like oh well then you got all your information from like if you're trusting this as your one source of information then if it's not factual and you're not like differentiating between the fiction and the nonfiction, then uh-huh. you're gonna have a fucked up view of black people, right? For sure. I mean, that's what happened. I think that's why this whole uh, uh, in the '90s, people looking at 
rappers as how as that's how black people are. It's like, well, you're being a bit unfair to how these rappers are because <laughs> yeah. so many of them are just normal people uh, who aren't the thugs that you're making them out to be. But also, exactly. the only black people you know are these rappers you're seeing a two second video of, uh, you know, two seconds of their video, and you're assuming that that's all black people. Um, and that's why you would hear so many times. I mean, I know I heard this was like, oh, yeah, you're black, but you're not like the others. Yeah. Like, who are the others? Yep. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like a lot, uh, like most suburban black kids heard that at least yeah. once. Oh, yeah. And then I would even say quite a few urban black kids heard it, like, not urban, but yeah, I guess more urban city mm-hmm. black kids heard it, it, like, heard it or like, knew someone that heard it yeah i bet black kids in chicago heard it oh for sure (laughs) yeah it's like it's like oh okay if that's how you're like if that's your measuring stick then stop that right that shouldn't be your barometer for (laughs) absolutely i mean it's just so bizarre especially when it's like you know tupac was the big rapper and, and, and biggie but tupac was really kind of like the one i heard everyone talk about so if if you're saying like, oh, these thug rappers, and you're talking about Tupac, and you're saying I'm so different than these rappers, yeah, I'm different in that Tupac is incredibly more eloquent than I am. Yeah. <laughs> like he was so beautifully eloquent. So what is the problem even? That's not he's not even thuggish in that regard. You know, like it's just I don't people fell for an image that was like a pre- of presentation. But they weren't listening to what people were actually saying, especially or, when it came to him. Or looking at what they were doing. Right. Yeah, it's a shame. I hope you enjoyed that chat. It was, I think, uh, a, a great chat. He's obviously a great person with a good heart, and I thought he was really thoughtful. I really appreciate him coming on to share that. And more, if you want to listen to the rest of what we talked about listen to the episode from a couple of days ago number 199 comedy and sketch with john ross and you can follow john ross on twitter instagram and tiktok at black john ross you can follow us on twitter instagram and facebook at there it is pod and you can follow me on twitter at jason far jokes and instagram at jason far picks and tiktok at jason far talks but i have no tiktoks We also have a comedy lifestyle newsletter. We have link in bio for all of that information. Next week, we have a special 200th episode, a little quick episode. Also doubles as a Thanksgiving episode. Be sure to subscribe wherever you're listening. Thank you for listening. Until next time, be good to each other.